Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to another podcast with me, Chris Hutton, project manager here at the FMEF, or I should say a vlog, otherwise Martin, I'm going to be in trouble with Martin, as we're calling these vlogs now, not podcasts, but anyway. Uh, another day in South Africa and another bad SOE story. I'm not sure if all of you know, but in case you didn't, uh, let me give you the background for this particular one. So yesterday on the 28th of August, uh, news came out that South African Express had been grounded by the airport's company of South Africa, that's AXA, due to operational reasons. Now we can you know, speculate as to what that might be. Might be safety concerns, might be financial issues, but when it comes to SOEs in South Africa, the news shouldn't come as any surprise. Um, our SOEs are famous, or should we say infamous, for their non-performance their inability to um, sustain a good level of service and service delivery and the production of, of good um, good quality goods and services for people. We can take ESCOM and SAA as the prime examples, but SA Express has been one that's sort of flown under the radar uh, in the last few years. They have received bailouts from the government in the past. Um, it was said last year in December 2018 by their CEO that they would produce and turn a profit by April of this year. And it is now the end of August 2019 and, um, well, as they say, the proof is in the pudding. So we're still waiting to see that profit. And now this latest news about their grounding. Uh, there were reports yesterday afternoon that they had reached an agreement with AXA and that they would be allowed to fly again. But then this morning, those reports were contradicted. Uh, and the news was that they still may not operate. I think 11 of their 22 aircraft are operational, but I might be you know, incorrect in the specific numbers, but, you know, the point is that their fleet isn't, isn't operating nearly to the capacity that it, that it should. And again, this doesn't come as a surprise, um, it being an, a state-owned enterprise. Now, now that you have some background on it, I would just like to give Minister Mboweni, uh, Minister Tito Mboweni, the finance minister, some credit here, because according to Business Day, and I'll read for you here, uh, he has taken a hard line on struggling state-owned SAS state-owned airline, SA Express, and has turned down its plea for a 200 million rand government loan guarantee. So to me, that's great. It sets a very good precedent. I'm sure a lot of you know that later in the year, um, the ratings agencies are expected to announce some news about South Africa's credit rating. They're very worried about South Africa's SOEs and their financial um, positions, especially ESCOM. Uh, ESCOM is accruing billions and billions of rand in debt. Uh, it keeps getting government bailouts all the time. And then you add onto that pile SAA and, and uh, SA Express and Transnet to an extent, PRASA, um, the post office, <laughs> take your pick. All of the South Africa's SOEs are struggling massively, but that's in the nature of government-owned enterprises. Uh, they're not subject to market forces and market competition. Uh, and in a country like South Africa, where they keep receiving bailouts, they can not perform, to put it quite simply. Uh, they, c they don't have to worry about whether they're actually on time, whether they produce good quality goods and services, because the government will bail them out time after time after time. Um, to give you some more details on this SA Express story, um, the guarantee, the fact that the minister has not given that guarantee to me is a good signal to both uh, the credit agencies and foreign investors that uh, he at least is trying to right the SOEs, sort of the, the faltering, the ailing ship that they are. Uh, he's trying to course correct and indicate to investors um, and foreign foreign agencies, foreign interests, that he is trying to fix things, that he's trying to make the SOEs more accountable, and that, they, that he will hold them accountable for their performance. Uh, and to me, that's a very good sign. Now, we'll have to see, of course, if he doesn't at some point simply give them this bailout. Maybe this is just a once-off um, postponement of that bailout, of that guarantee. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. So, but for now, I think it's, it's good news on the fiscally responsible front. Um, to to just to expand a little bit more, um, according to industry sources, this is also not the first time that this has happened to SA Express. Apparently, it owes AXA millions in airport fees. Um, AXA declined to comment, but it said in, no in a note to shareholders that SA Express had been grounded and will not be having flights in and out of AXA airports. We cannot, however, give you any additional details around this. Um, now, you know, this is... Maybe in the in the interest of sort of uh, balance, I should say maybe AXA's in the wrong here. Uh, we don't have all the details, so maybe they're being unreasonable in their dealings with ASA Express. 
but it seems like whenever SOEs are involved, there's always some sort of shady dealing, some issue. Um, and that's what happens when companies aren't fiscally transparent and fiscally responsible. Unfortunately, that tends to happen no matter who's running uh, uh, the SOE. Um, SAA, for example, has had, um, it's probably around 10 now. I've probably lost count. <laughs> Many of us have lost count at this point over the number of CEOs they've had in the last um, 10 years. Let's, let's use that as an, a, a sort of a set time period. In the last 10 years, they keep cycling through, um, through CEOs and board members. And there's simply no change because no one is truly held accountable. Um, in a private company, when the board or the CEO fails, uh, there's a much higher chance, of course this doesn't happen all the time, but there's a much higher chance that changes will be made, um, real um, sort of discernible, actionable changes, whereas with SOEs they can simply change over and nothing of substance gets done. Um, just to go a little bit further in this article, um, I'm just sort of reading you know, as I go along this thing from Business Day. Um, there's also a concern, I suppose, about whether SA Express can pay back this money. Um, I'm not sure of the exact details about how much money their executives get paid um, and the fact that they haven't turned a profit, or they said they would turn a profit by, 20, by April 2019 of this year and they still haven't. Um, you know, why would the government want to keep giving them government money or taxpayer money, I suppose, uh, if they keep on not performing? Uh, there's no return on that investment, to put it that way. For those of you who are more financially and economically inclined, why would you invest in something, a property or a business or anything like that, if it continually, if you had to continually, continually give it more and more money, and if it didn't perform to what it said it would? Uh, on that point of, of sort of government bailouts and taxpayer money, you should also keep in mind that this sort of thing, when the government has to divert this money in its coffers, which are shrinking all the time, uh, we've heard the news from SARS, that they're worried. Um, I think the SARS commissioner, he was on 702 on Monday evening. I listened to some of that interview. Um, you know, they're worried about the tax revenue that they're going to collect and there's talk, so talk of a tax revolt and all that sort of thing. When government collects even less and less in taxes, it has less to spend on crucial welfare services. So in a country like South Africa with many millions of poor people, the overwhelming majority of whom are black um, and who have still not managed to rise out of poverty because of restrictive socialist policies implemented by this government since 1994. Um, you know, they rely on welfare services and when the government keeps bailing out SOEs which don't perform, they have to divert that money from crucial services for poorer people such as welfare, housing, service delivery, all of that. And then we see increased service delivery protests. So all of this has a cyclical effect. These things reinforce each other, these factors. And you shouldn't be surprised when um, you know, when government can't deliver the services that it has promised because it keeps on diverting that money to failing SOEs, which quite simply don't deserve that money um, due to their non-performance uh, and their very low um, ability to deliver. An example of that, uh, reports kept by AXA on SA Express on their on-time performance show a marked deterioration by SA Express over July, with only half of its flights in and out of OR Tambo taking off and arriving within 15 minutes of the scheduled time. Its on-time performance for Cape Town was 85%, but none of its flights arrived or left King Sharko Airport on time. That's of course in Durban. Um, and then the l in last October, uh, so October 2018, SA Express received 1.2 billion Rand from the Fiscus to repay outstanding debt. I'm not sure how well, they've used that to repay that debt. Um, and again, the point about it was said that it would break even and turn a profit by April 2019, but this has still not happened. Indeed, if a company needs a bailout to, to break even or to turn a profit, can you even consider that a profit? Uh, I guess, you know, philosophically, the concept of a profit is uh, should that be dependent on receiving bailouts or, or government guarantees? That's also a question to ponder, I think, and to keep in mind when you hear in the very unlikely event that an SOE has broken even or has made a profit. Um, just there, yeah, there's the numbers for the aircraft. 11 of 22 are operational. I'm not sure where that is right now. It might be even lower. So just a sad state of SA Express, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I think government's biggest focus right now is probably on ESCOM uh, because of its importance and electricity provision, all that sort of thing. The idea that it is too big to fail. 
So in that regard as well, I don't think Minister Mboweni will really have much time for the airlines. He's going to be much more focused on ESCOM and getting that right. Um, you know, what to do with SA Express? Uh, I wonder at this point whether it shouldn't just be folded into SAA. I don't know if there's any point in trying to salvage it anymore. Um, it just keeps draining money, which could be used for by the government for service delivery to the poor. Um, yeah, I don't think it should continue to receive bailouts. Uh, quite as simple as that. It's a tough decision, but hopefully those people who are working there, they can work in other air for other airlines um, and other areas of the industry. I'm sure they have great expertise. But the simple fact of the matter is an SOE such as SA Express, it's going to continue lurching from crisis to crisis and there's no reason to justify it receiving more government money. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, I want to give Minister Mboweni credit here for for what he has done and indicated. I think this sets the right kind of precedent. I think this shows that at least some people in the government are focused on fiscal, not even conservatism, but fiscal responsibility and accountability. And that sends a very good signal both to us South Africans uh, normal citizens and also to investors. It shows that government is serious about fixing at least some of its issues and hopefully this can be a trend continuing in the future. So we'll have to wait and see as more details of the story emerge. Maybe we'll find out some things that change how we view what has happened at SA Express. Um, but let's, yeah, let's, let's see. I think, I think at this point it should definitely be, uh, be closed down. It shouldn't, uh, government shouldn't continue throwing money at this when government money itself is dwindling more and more and more. There's no real point in keeping this going. Um, you should also think about the impact that this sort of thing, a grounding, would have on tourism in the country. We know South Africa, you know, we like to think of the country as a hub for tourism and how important tourism is for millions of South Africans for jobs and an income. Uh, when this sort of grounding happens, it impacts flights, uh, especially to smaller towns. Um, all over South Africa, but if SA Express were no longer sort of propped up by government money, it would open room for private competition to enter the, those markets and to lower prices and to offer more reliable, dependable services to both local and foreign tourists, which would hopefully increase um, the amount of people traveling to those small towns. And of course, then they'll spend more money there, which is good for the local businesses. When you have an SOE that is propped up by government, um, when it fails, the effect on the general economy is is not debilitating, but a lot worse. In South Africa's case, because of our low economic growth, it could be very well be de debilitating. We want every possible reason to give tourists uh, to come here and spend money. And this is simply another reason for them not to come because they can't rely on flights. As simple as that. They can't uh, be sure of when flights will work, when they won't. And for that reason, they'll simply take their money elsewhere and decide to travel elsewhere, whether they come here for business or for pleasure. So I just want to give you guys that quick update on SA Express. Um, yeah, don't be too surprised, I suppose, when you hear this news about SOEs, especially in the South African context. But I hope you found that uh, informative. Um, um, I think the FMF uh, will continue doing work on this, of course, trying to give you guys as much info as we can get on SA Express, SAA, uh, ESCOM. Uh, if you find value in our work, please consider um, becoming a member of the FMF, consider donating to the FMF. I'm sure many of you are well aware of all the work we try to do, all the areas we try to cover. Government gets up to a lot of mischief, to put it lightly. So we try and do our best. And with your support, which we value very, very much, we can continue that fight. Um, yeah, I'll end on that note on this, uh, this Thursday afternoon. I hope you all have a good weekend, um, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.